Welcome back, everybody. Um, I know that I haven't personally done a video in a little while, um, but I'm back visiting my family uh, for a couple days, so I figured I'd uh, do a little upload for you guys. Um, I hope you guys liked the last video. We did a series of arguments. Uh, Chessa, uh, Fontanez, Zach Fontanez, and myself. Um, that was just the poetry. Just uh, There's a lot to that story. It's a, it's a full-length play. Uh, but we just did uh, just did the poetry, minor conversation parts from that. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we have more stuff like com coming like that soon. Uh, Going to be do doing harsh reality um, towards the end of the month. I don't want to set anything in stone because you know some things go away. Um, but uh, I got notes today. I got notes because I don't always say everything that I want to say. Um, I know I've been kind of doing improv all the time, but today we're going by the notes. Um, so I, uh, a couple weeks ago, not a month, maybe a month, um, Zach and I met again with uh, Sherry Alfonso, uh, who is a theater person um, that travels to the area at times, um, and we're going to be working on something together soon. We both have a lot of... All, all three of us have a lot of things going on right now. Um, I don't know, it's trying to fly away. Um, we all have a lot of things going on right now. Uh, but once I finish up with Hamovic and Harsh Reality, then maybe I'll have some time and I'll contact them again to, to work on our stuff. Um, but anyway, um, so recently I got to go to uh, New, New Milford Theater. Uh, with a friend of mine, Jared Reynolds, who is also a playwright. Um, he also writes for uh, Broadway World, um, and that's how I got to go. We went to New, F New Milford Theater. I always mess up the name, but uh, we saw Vanya, uh, Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike, which is a play written by Chris Durang. Uh It's a comedy. I'm not much of a critic, so I'm not going to give you guys the full in detail review. Um, but I liked it. It was pretty funny. Um, at the beginning, it was hard for me to remember that it was in modern times because it takes place in this, I don't want to say log cabin, but it takes place in this like cabin, um, kind of. And the only modern thing that I remembered was the phone, I think. That's not really anybody's fault. I mean, I guess it's somebody's fault. Maybe my fault. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I always, I like, at one point, I think the phone rang or something. And I was like, oh my God, right, it's modern times. They have cell phones. Uh, well, it was a home phone, but still. Um, they had this really cool projection window, which showed, like, the changing of the days, and, like, there's a windmill, and um, showed, like, there was the flying bird outside, and it was really cool. It was, like, really neat stuff, and, yeah. So, thank you to Jared Reynolds for uh, asking me to go along with him. Um, we're both members of the Dramatist Guild as well, so hopefully now we'll be able to see some more theater uh, in the Connecticut area. He's also living in Connecticut now. Um... So, yeah, hopefully some things will happen and we'll see more theater and be more involved in the theater community in Connecticut. Um, speaking of being involved in the theater community in Connecticut, oh my gosh, I just had the most, a couple days ago, I guess it ended, but um, I just had the most incredible experience the last two weeks uh, with Cheshire Youth Theater. Um, they use uh, Nelson Hall Theater, which is the theater that I work at um, with Colin. Uh, they use our theater um, for their summer uh, theater program and it was incredible uh, that's why I have this program here we did singing in the rain junior um, it was so cool um, I think the youngest kids were going into fourth grade and the eldest were going into 10th maybe 11th I'm not sure but it was awesome it was incredible to see what the, like these young actors and like can do and Two weeks. Like I never realized how it's a full show. You know, it's it's barely shorter than the actual show. It's mainly just edits for um, for uh, younger audiences and younger cast members. Um, uh, but it was incredible being a part of that. Um, it was a lot of fun. There wasn't a day where I was like, oh, I have to go to, go to work with this camp. Like it was awesome. I was so excited to be there every day. Stayed extra hours. It was it was great. Um, I worked with Colin Palma, who uh, is obviously my supervisor at work, but he is also the technical director, and he was the stage manager for the show. I was like the stage manager's assistant, 
kind of partial stage manager. But really, I was the deck captain. I was in crew. I was in charge of the stage crew, um, doing, um, helping get the set um, on and off the stage. And I also worked with Bobby McCahill, who uh, did costume and uh, props design. Um, and I was working with her doing props. Uh, we built this really cool piano, um, which maybe I'll put a picture of on Instagram or on Skip Patrol, maybe. I don't know, but it was really cool. We built this entire, it's uh, a stand-up piano, but we built this piano um, out of cardboard and paint, essentially, and it just looks so cool. It looks real, even though like I know what went into making it. Um, it just looks really awesome. Uh, then the musical director was Christine uh, Yandau, and the, um, the choreographer, I was going to say dance director, which is not a thing, so don't ever say that. Uh, the choreographer uh, was Luis Antonio. I think Antonio was his last name. Maybe he had another name. No, it's Luis Antonio. Um, and uh, director was Jocelyn Pinnell. And uh, her husband, Titus, was assistant tech director, I guess. And then Maggie. Oh, where's Maggie's last name? Maggie uh, Grino Trier. Uh, she uh, helped with lights and sound as well as Titus did, um, helping Colin whenever he needed it. But it was really cool working with everybody. Um, if you're from Connecticut, you probably know some of their names, um, especially. Oh, the sunlight's coming in now. Hold on. That's a little better. <laughs> um, especially Luis Antonio. He's huge in Connecticut dance. He doesn't live in Connecticut anymore. Um, but I know he danced at Yale and he had his own production that he put up uh, a couple of years ago, a year ago maybe, I think was the most recent one. Um, but it was awesome working with them. Got to meet some more people in the Connecticut theater industry. Um, I believe that they're all teachers as well. Um, but yeah, it was so cool working with them. And it was, I don't know, it was just the coolest thing ever. It was Cheshire Youth Theater at Nelson Hall. Um, Yeah, this is the thing. It was awesome. Can't wait to do it again next summer. Uh, they did. I think they did Lion King last year. Um, they haven't decided what's next summer. But if you got to see it, you were lucky. It was just. It was the coolest thing. Um, anyway, let's go back to the list so I don't ramble on forever. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so I've been working on Hammervik recently. Uh, well, I've been working on a couple of my plays, but I worked on Hammervik recently, and um, it's going. Uh, it's a bit of a struggle because um, it's ad adapted from Hamlet, which is written in Shakespeare's English, and I had to uh, modernize it to bring it to. Um, takes place in 1981, in my in my adaptation. So bring it to 1981 English, and it takes place in Russia. So I had to bring it to Russian English. Um, it's been quite quite an experience. Uh, I'm loving it. It's it's going well. It's just, it's a lot of work. And right now, the hardest thing for me is bringing it from the Russian English into the decade. I'm bringing it into 1981. And I don't know a lot about Russia in 1981. So there's been so much research I've been doing. But like the language itself, just when, my, when I think of Russia, my first thought is um, Soviet Union, like early Soviet, mid-Soviet Union. So just very industrial and gloomy and, I don't know, there's just like heartbreaking military industrial settings. And this, I'm sure there's other ways to say that, better ways, and better ways to describe uh, pre-1980 Russia. But that's what my mind is in like 1950s Russia, kind of. Um, so I've been watching some stuff and uh, there's, a, there's a movie called Brother uh, that's in Russian that I watched and a movie called... Um, uh, Moscow has no time for tears, I think, or Moscow doesn't like tears, something like that. But both movies are helping me and listening to like '80s music, <clears throat> like especially like pop hits that would have been global hits um, in the '80s, is helping me to, to remind me that it's not like military Moscow, like it's 1980s Moscow. Well, even though the, my play doesn't take place in Moscow, but it's not military Russia. It's 1980s Russia, which is still militarized, but. It's not the same thing at all, you know? Um, 
so yeah, uh, then the last thing I want to touch on, I'm working on Hellbent. Hellbent is still going. Um, I'm working with Nick Perez, who's doing the music. Uh, he said I'll be getting it in the next couple days. So maybe next video uh, I can talk about that. Maybe sh show it to you. Depends. We'll see. Um, let me make sure this is all I wanted to talk about, though. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not going to be here very long. I'm only supposed to be here for a couple days. If things go to plan, uh, go as planned. But as we know, that doesn't happen. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> but hopefully this was entertaining for you. And uh, yeah, hopefully you don't feel like you wasted your time watching this video. And hopefully you're excited because at the end of the month we'll be doing Harsh Reality of Daniel Poet, uh, which is going to be really cool. We're going to be filming that on stage uh, with... Chessa and Jared and uh, Aaron's going to be doing photography. Um, so, yeah, get ready, get excited, and see you next time. Peace.